Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here today with the champion of court lawyers, Terry Johnson <laughs> from Firearms Legal Protection. And I want to talk to you today <coughs> with Terry about the difference between carrying firearms in your vehicle and transporting them and how not understanding that difference can get you hemmed up by the law. Firearms Legal Protection just started a 100% free monthly newsletter to bring quality, accurate information about legal self-defense to good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people like you. Go sign up for free, no hassle help for your self-defense at the link in the description and thank them for sponsoring today's lesson. So Terry, when we talk about misconduct involving weapons, this is one that gets a lot of people. It, it does because people have a misunderstanding of the law. So let, let, me, let me give an example. Um, take a state that's not constitutional carry. I know that's hard for you being that here in weird, Arizona. But, you weird uh, people. Um, you, you need a permit to uh, have a firearm and you're driving and in some states, especially your northern states, you have to disclose that you have a firearm. Mm -hmm. So you are literally carrying a firearm at that point. Um, because it's in your passenger vehicle, it may be on your hip, it may be in the glove compartment, it may be in the center console, wherever, but you are carrying a firearm. That's and that basically means you have a firearm in the passenger compartment of the vehicle. Yes, and you have access to it. Yeah. I'll call it quick access. You know, I can open the glove compartment, I can lift up the center console, I can go on my hip, under the seat, wherever. Now, the difference between that and transporting, when you transport, your firearm, and this is, I'm just gonna give the federal uh, version so everyone understands, and I'm assuming you're gonna be crossing state lines. It has to be in a box designed for a firearm. It has to be locked, and it has to be in the furthest point of the vehicle. So what's the furthest point of the vehicle? If you're in a car, it goes all the way to the, uh, it's in the trunk. Yeah, in the trunk of a car. If you're in a minivan. It's all the way to the right. rear. Right. If you have a truck, like that beautiful truck I'm looking at of yours, that's a nice truck, by the way. Thank you. Um, it doesn't have to go on the bed, but it goes in the furthest point back inside the cab. And again, there's no ammo in there. Now, if you are transporting a vehicle, let's say you want to drive... Transporting a firearm. I'm sorry, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, transporting a firearm from point A to point B, and point B happens to be outside the state. Um, if you're doing this, you're under federal law. And yeah. there's no duty to disclose if you're transporting, okay? So if you're pulled over, let's say you are pulled over in... Um, Colorado, and let's say it's, you know, the same way I just described, you do, and the officer says, do you have any guns in the vehicle? The answer to that would be no, because you are transporting. That's an interesting distinction. I think a lot of people would have said, well, yeah, I have a locked gun in the trunk or something like that. Under federal law, you don't have to disclose that because you are transporting. I'm transporting, not carrying. And there is a huge difference between the two. In order to carry, hmm. I need in most states, I need a permit. Okay. Transport is something different. I'm moving my, my firearm from point A to point B. And that is not a... Re so, so again, locked in a case designed for firearms, furthest point of access, no ammunition in that case with it. Yes. Now I'm transporting. You are transporting. Now, any pretty much anything else, if I can get to it more quickly than that, I'm carrying. And you, in most states, you would need, a, well, almost half the states you need a permit to do so. And so now we're talking about whether or not that's basically accessible to me. Correct. Uh, as, or somebody in the car, that could be under the seat. If you're dumb, that could be in one of those goofy car holsters, which are also dumb. Right. Um, in the glove box, also dumb. Uh, now, now, what about though, if, if I'm the driver of the car and my passenger has a firearm on their person? Great question. That is between the passenger and the officer, and again, depending on where you are. So if the passenger has a uh, firearm on his or her hip, for example, and the officer says, do you have any firearms? Now, I don't have any firearms. No, I don't. Um, depending on the state you're in, they, the other person may have to disclose that, yes, I have a firearm on me. So there's an interesting part. If you are not sure about that other person, even if you are sure about that other person, the officer says, are there any firearms in the vehicle? I, I don't have any firearms on me. You've answered legally and properly. And then, psh, 
shut your mouth, right? Because that's a, a question for them for another day. Um, so so what, what I want to be very clear on here is that if you are carrying a firearm, so that's anywhere that's accessible in the vehicle, um, and you get pulled over by a police officer, right? Then that officer does have a compelling personal interest in whether or not there is a deadly threat to his person. Now, of course, if you're a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person, you're not any risk to an officer. And, and I've said that, I've said right. that to police officers. I'll give you a for instance. I got pulled over in northern Arizona. This was a few years ago. I was you driving. You get pulled over a lot, I'm noticing. I, well, they've been a few times. <laughs> I maybe um, I think speed limits are arbitrary and capricious and stupid, um, but but so I got pulled over for speeding and an officer uh, was a rookie on his very like he had to be one of his first FTO shifts, and he's got his, his FTO with him. They both get out of the car. They come over the passenger side. I've got both windows rolled down. Do you know why I pulled you over? No, officer. Why did you pull me over? Oh, you were you know speeding in this construction zone. Oh man, so sorry about that. Uh, okay, can I see your license, your registration, your proof of insurance? Absolutely. Let me have you hand you all that stuff. Uh, and are there any weapons in the car? I happen to have about 20 of them in the car because I was on my way to teach a firearms class to a right. new group of shooters. So I had a boatload of guns in the car. And so I said, uh, yes, uh, interestingly enough, I, I, in the back seat there, I've got a whole bunch of guns because I'm on my way to teach a, a pistol class. Um, and uh, I am carrying concealed on my person. And so, uh, okay, I answered honestly, right? And that's right. his carriage of firearms. And so the interesting part is that officer decided to, to come and take possession of the one that was on my person and then have me stand at the back of my car while he finished his business. Wrote me a warning, by the way. There you go. Uh, but uh, uh, at any rate, so, so that is all carriage though. Had he wanted to take possession of all the guns in the car? He could. Okay, man, that's on you. Uh, but those were carried firearms. Even the ones that were in cases, and I, I didn't lock them also, but not on my person, that's considered carried, Yes. not transported. Correct. Now here's something else a lot of people uh, may get confused on. Carrying from point A to point B, so if I wanna, I'm sorry, transporting from point A to point B. So if I live in California, hypothetically, and I wanna go to Illinois, um, the question becomes, on my way, I can transport it from A to B if, one, I can legally possess and carry in my home state and legally possess possess and carry where I'm going. Yeah. So a lot of people really get that confused. They say, well, I don't have a permit to carry. My permit won't allow me to carry in Missouri, mm -hmm. hypothetically. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna transport my gun from here to Missouri and you are breaking the law if you do that. That's interesting because, so, so if I'm not legal to possess it there, do I have to be possess legal? Possess and carry. Well, even if I just transport it to my home? Well, if you live there, you can, you can, you, you can possess there, that's fine. You're, you're fine if you can possess where you're at. If you, as long as I can possess where I'm going to be. No, 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 no. Possess where you are coming from. Now, what if I rent a hotel room in Missouri? Now, all of a sudden, I've established a domicile in Missouri. So the question becomes at that point, what are you doing in that state? So let me, let me give you a, a clearer example like in Illinois. Okay. okay. Illinois is what we call a peaceable journey state. So Illinois does not recognize anyone's permit, Nobody's to my knowledge. Not. So if I want to go from Michigan to Wisconsin, um, I have to drive through, in theory, I could go through the Upper Peninsula, but I'm not going to make that long drive. But I, can go, I have to go through Illinois. Now. I'm allowed to have my firearm on my hip. I can carry it in my vehicle in Illinois, but I, I can get out, the firearm can't. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so what happens if I spend the night in Illinois? If I'm passing through and passing through only, probably not. They're probably gonna make me get through that state and drive to Wisconsin or Iowa or wherever I'm going before I can stop with that firearm. So you have to be careful and you have to know the laws of where you are. And this is one of the reasons that I think national reciprocity is so important and we need to get it done and actually make it happen. Probably not gonna happen under the current administration, no. but we definitely need to make it happen because these kinds of patchworks of laws are a mess. Here's another one for you. Think about this, if you're flying, let's say you've got to catch a flight out east in uh, New York, New Jersey. Seen this happen to people. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you've just got a connecting flight you know, and your connecting flight all of a sudden gets canceled. Yeah. What do you do? Well, what you can't do is you can't take control of that bag um, that you've checked 
with your firearm in it because now you're back in possession. So what you've got to do is basically tell the, um, the airline, look, I can't take my bag. I need you to hold it and put it on the flight for me the next day. Yeah. Where I've seen people hemmed up in New York State is they're dumb and they don't know that they're illegal to carry in New York State. And it's really probably not a problem when they travel to New York State because they their bag gets delivered on the carousel. They go do their business. Then they go to check back in at LaGuardia or whatever. And they I've go, got a firearm to declare. I have a firearm yep. to declare, which the ticketing agent just automatically makes a call to NYPD. They come on over and they say, hey, we'd like to see your firearms owner ID and all your paperwork for that gun which is very restrictive in New York State. People go, what are you talking about? I don't have one of those. Right this way. Yep. Coming with us and you end up catching charges. That will absolutely stick. And so we don't want to do that. So carriage of firearms versus transporting of firearms. This is a tricky space and, and I want you to be very careful while you're doing that. I, quite frankly, having driven across the country multiple times, this is one of the reasons that I'm actually pretty careful with my route, that I would prefer to stay in the gun friendlier states and yes. the ones that make this easier rather than harder. You start getting up into the Northeast, man, you are gonna struggle with this stuff. You yeah, know? And, and wherever your permit is not uh, accepted. Again, like, you know, my permit in Michigan is accepted in uh, 40 different states. I think right. we're the probably the top one, but I'm not sure everywhere that Arizona is, but you know, as an FLP member, you know, we have a app on your on your phone. Yep. And you can Love go on FLP there app. and it'll tell you under my FLP. And again, whether you're a basic or all the way through a premium member, it tells you everywhere that you can carry, where your permit's honored. And uh, we have a lot of people call and they, they will, like you said, they will route their trip because it makes sense. I, I flew in uh, and did some training at the Six Hour Academy. Not, uh, this was a couple years ago now. Um, and uh, that's in New Hampshire, right? Which live free or die, that's great. Good carry laws there, no problems. We had a good time. But boy, you gotta be careful not to cross any state lines around there because basically everywhere you go, you're gonna get burned. Yeah, you flew in uh, Boston or? No, you? I did not fly into Boston. I flew into New Hampshire. Got it, there uh, you go. So I forget which airport it was, but it was a little one. Um, and no, because I'm not flying into Boston because Massachusetts is a mess. Yeah, and the same thing applies. You know what's going to happen when you go back to check your firearm in? They're going to you're going to get a phone call, and you are in illegal possession at that point. Bad juju. So, carriage, possession, different things. Uh, transporting, okay. Be very cautious. Carriage, much more difficult. I know we didn't answer every question here. Got to go and do some research, guys. Terry, thanks for the knowledge. Thank you.